also known as Levi, probably written between A.D. 60 and A.D. 65. The content here is the birth of Jesus of Nazareth ushered in the long-awaited age of a new kingdom on earth, the kingdom of heaven. Matthew's Gospel records the advent of this new kingdom in the teachings and actions of Jesus, the Messiah. Since the kingdom of heaven is a major theme throughout the Gospel, Matthew was careful to show how Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament passages that speak of the Messiah, the ruler of the kingdom. He recounts the family history of of Jesus to show his royal lineage. After describing the virgin birth, Matthew details Jesus' messianic baptism, his temptation in the wilderness in the early days of his ministry. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught his disciples how life in the kingdom should be lived. Jesus also performed many miracles and taught the people various parables or stories that further illustrate what the kingdom of heaven is like. Matthew was careful to point out that the Gentiles, as well as the Jews, could be included in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' death and resurrection conclude Matthew's gospel, along with Jesus' command to make disciples of every nation. Okay, so this is Matthew 1, the ancestor of Jesus the Messiah. You know, it starts with Abraham, it goes to Isaac, uh, Jacob, Judah, Perez, Ezra, Ram, a bunch of names I can't name. And then it finishes up with uh, Nathan, Jacob, Joseph. And Mary gave birth to Jesus, who was called the Messiah. And I think the important thing is, you know, not only be able to trace back the lineage of Jesus, but the next verse says, All those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to Babylonian exile, and 14 from Babylonian exile to the Messiah. The birth of Jesus the Messiah. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations, relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. Matthew chapter 2, Visitors from the East Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem. 
asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leader, leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, apologies, <clears throat> and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. The Escape to Egypt after the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem, who were two years old and under. Based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance, Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her daughter, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. The Return to Nazareth When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who are trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that the new Jesus... Wait, sorry. But when he learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son, Ar Archelaus, who was afraid to go there. Then, after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled 
what the prophets had said. He will be called a Nazarene. Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist prepares the way. In those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching. His message was, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all of Judea and all over the Judean or all over the Jordan Valley went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch and baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes. You brood of snakes. I think that's like a bunch of snakes. He exclaimed, Who warned you? to flee God's coming wrath. Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe or we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I so much greater that I am not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the chaff. Chaff with never-ending fire, the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. Chapter 4 The Temptation of Jesus Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For forty days and forty nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time the devil came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you don't even hurt a foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus said to him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away, and angels came and took care of Jesus. The ministry of Jesus begins. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He went first to Nazareth and left there and moved to Capernaum, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. In the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death casts its shadow, a light has shined. From then on, Jesus began to preach, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The first disciples. <clears throat> One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called to them too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Crowds followed Jesus. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom and he healed every kind of disease and illness. News about him spread as far as Syria, and people soon began bringing to him all who were sick, and whatever their sickness or disease, or if they were demon-possessed, or epileptic, or paralyzed, he healed them all. Large crowds followed him. Wherever he went, people from Galilee, the ten towns, Jerusalem, from all over Judea, and from east of the Jordan River. Chapter 5, Sermon on the Mount One day as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them the Beatitudes. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those 
whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. A teaching about salt and light. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Teaching about the Law Don't understand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the Law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great. In the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. A teaching about anger. You have heard that our ancestors were told, You must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, If you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in deeper danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. When you are on the way to the court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge, who will hand you over to an officer, and you'll be thrown into prison. And if that happens, you surely won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. A teaching about adultery. You have heard the commandment that says, you must not commit adultery. But I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one, one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even your stronger hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Teaching about divorce.
You've heard the law that says, a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife, unless she has been unfaithful, causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. Teaching about vows. You've also heard that our ancestors were told, you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you made to the Lord. But I say, do not make any vows. Do not say, by heaven, because heaven is God's throne. And do not say, by the earth, because the earth is his footstool. And do not say, by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say, by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. Just say a simple, yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. You've heard the law that says punishment must match the injury, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it too. Give to those who ask, and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. teaching about love for enemies. You have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of the Father in heaven, for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you only love those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in Heaven is perfect.